Okay. As I was saying, the course is about test and measurement, isn't it? And we are trying now to define some uh, parameters or some terms that are relevant. We define an instrument as any device for changing any physical variable into what the desired form, isn't it? And we gave example of these physical variables. It can be temperature, it can be pressure, it can be resistance, it can be volt, it can be anything, isn't it? And when you uh, change it, you can use it in different ways. You can either record it in a storage device, you can display it, you can deliver it to another stage for further processing, isn't it? A typical example here is a ruler. We use a ruler for measuring what? The length. The length is one of the physical variables, isn't it? It is among the seven fundamental quantities, if you can remember your physics. Can you? Good. So it measures the length. Therefore, the physical variable we are measuring is what? The length. And it expresses it in a suitable form. That is using a unit, isn't it? Either to say it is in meters or in kilometers or in centimeters or in inches, whatever. Are we together? So the measuring instruments are of different types. We have the simpler ones or the simple one. You can see it here. How? What and what is it made of? This is my measurement. That's the physical process I want to measure. It can be what? It can be temperature, it can be distance, it can be voltage, it can be it can be anything, isn't it? Now, this variable we are measuring, we represent it as, as what? X. Then we have a sensor here that will detect the amount of that physical variable and now change it into signal S and what? Display it. This is the simplest form of what? Measurement instrument we have, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> uh, if you look at that one, as I told you, the sensor, the function of the sensor is to uh, detect the presence of that physical variable and its amount, isn't it? And then display it. We can display it. As we have seen here, we are using a display, isn't it? And if we wish, we can what? Record it. We can use it for feeding another device, as I've just explained. And if the output uh, from the sensor is very small, sometimes we use amplifiers to what? Increase the strength of the signal so that we can see it very uh, clearly. And of course, apart from amplification, we can do some conversions. As you can see on this diagram, here is my what? Physical process I'm uh, measuring, isn't it? This is my sensor. In the simplest form, it just goes to where? The display, isn't it? But in some other uh, uh, modified versions, we have to amplify it so that the signal should be seen clearly. And sometimes if we don't want to display it in what? Analog form. We need analog to digital converter. You understand? And then maybe we can store it in a computer memory. We can deliver it to an output. We can deliver it to another output apart from what? The display unit. Are we there? Now, <clears throat> If we understand what is measurement, the next thing we need to do is to define what is calibration because whatever you measured, you have to express it in some term that people understand, isn't it? Because if you measure current and say, okay, there is current from this uh, battery, how much? You need to know, isn't it? So what is this calibration? This calibration is just a process of expressing a relationship between your input variable, that's the physical process you are measuring, and what? The signal you are producing from the sensor, isn't it? Which is what? The output. Look at this uh, graph. If you look at this, we assume here is our physical process. That's the input. Okay. And here is the corresponding signal from the sensor. So can you see that whenever this one is increasing, there will be what? A similar increase here, isn't it? Only that we have two regions. We have where we have a linear relationship between the measurement and what the signal output and if you go beyond that an error will start because from here you have see, you reach the level of saturation the variable keep on changing but the capacity of the sensor has been exhausted therefore it will what remain the same isn't it so therefore in short calibration is a process of what showing the relationship between the actual process the physical process you are measuring and what the output so that it will be expressed in, in some form that is making sense to the reader. Now, uh, this is what we have seen is the simple uh, measuring instrument. But in some cases, 
due to some errors from the environment we are going to see two types of errors later but due to that we do introduce another signal that will come together with the actual physical signal we are measuring so that this one we are uh, putting together with the physical we call it a modifying input its function is to what to make the physical signal to behave in some manner in such a way that the reading should have some level of accuracy and if you look at this this time around we have a modification this is my what physical process isn't it i'm measuring and of course i supposed to have this x as the physical variable from that physical process isn't it but knowing that whenever i'm doing some measurement there is what we call a modi sorry there is what we call an input i mean noise that is some signal that is not interested we are not trying to measure it but as the sensor is taking the real one that one would also be taken together with it isn't it so in order to nullify or to eliminate the effect of this noise we have to introduce what we call a modifying signal what's the function of this to be countering this one okay it should be like if these two the additively go into the sensor that's the product should be i mean the output should be a summation of the two right so this one should be like in opposite to this uh, interfacing signal so that it will be nullifying this for instance let me explain one scenario uh, there is uh, one what we call logarithmic amplifier the function of logarithmic amplifier basically is like to compress a signal because if you have if you can remember the log operation in mathematics what is the log of 10 to base 10 is it not one log 200 base 10 is 2 isn't it of 1000 is 3 what are we saying here if you take a signal as big as 1000 when it passes through the log amplifier it will just be expressed as 3 what is it doing compressing isn't it so we know that the function that signal that is coming out it is defined by two things one is the external input you have two is the temperature of your transistor which is the active device whenever the temperature of the device is increasing it is also further increasing the level of the input signal that increase is it something good or bad it is bad because it will give us wrong reading isn't it so we now have what we call the resistive uh, 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 a, a modification signal the function of that is to be producing an opposite signal to the temperature rising whenever temperature rises the noise signal will be increasing isn't it so that resistive uh, uh, counter signal will now be producing a negative to that so that it will subtract it out so the same thing here so if you look at this this graph we have how many curves here or oh, straight lines three isn't it this one stand for when we put a modifying signal of different value this one is when we put another modifying signal of different value and this one is what when we put another meaning by introducing this our modifying signal we can change the behavior of what the relationship between the input and what the output and of course we always try to do it proportional to this our interfacing signal or interfering signal so that we have the real result determined by the physical variable alone Are we say we do understand this because without this this interference signal will cause an error with this if you put it wrongly it can either increase or what decrease you have to strike a what balance between the two then the next thing is since we know a noise do enter to uh, enter the measuring devices when we are uh, measuring some physical processes isn't it so we have the issue of accuracy and what error what is the accuracy of an instrument this accuracy is defined as what the difference between the true value of the measures measurement that is the physical process and the real measured value indicated by the instrument for instance if you have a ammeter what does it measure current isn't it maybe you attach it to a battery that has a total current of let's say one amp but at the end of the day you get 1.01 .01. you know the true value of the current is one amp isn't it but what the measurement instrument indicated is 1.01 .01, isn't it so if you take the difference that is the standard value minus what what we have seen as a reading it will give us 0 0.01 that is our what accuracy of the device so what are we saying 
we are saying the smaller the difference between the actual and what the major the higher the accuracy of the device isn't it because for instance now if the current is one amp and the instrument is showing one amp what's the difference zero so therefore it has hundred percent accuracy because the difference is what zero but that never happened anywhere isn't it so what causes or what determine the level of accuracy is the error the higher the error the lower the accuracy and vice versa isn't it now for this reason we have two types of errors we have what we call systematic errors we have what we call random errors how many two the systematic error these are the errors that are caused by non factors and if you eliminate that those factors the error will be eliminated also are you with me systematic errors are the errors caused by what non factors and if you can eliminate those errors i mean those factors the error should go isn't it therefore systematic is a defined error you can handle it but the random error is error that comes from sources that you cannot account for isn't it now what are the factors that causes this systematic error there are so many of them the first one is if you're modifying because i told you we use modifying signal isn't it because of the word interfering signal whenever this modifying input you put it wrongly because i have shown here how many costs do we have three and they are defined by what the amount of how accurate you put your modifying signal are we together now whenever your modifying signal is different from the truth value the actual value we can have an error and that error is what a systematic error what do you do just adjust it to the true the real value the error will go isn't it another cause of the uh, systematic error is aging whenever your device major device is becoming too old and too old just like human being the efficiency is reducing isn't it what do you do either to replace the spare parts that are weak or to replace the instrument generally isn't it and also if some damage or some abuse occur to the device or to the sensor definitely there will be miscalibration and that should be an error isn't it and that error can also be what eliminated because whenever you are able to repair the damage isn't it or to use the device accurately without any abuse it should give you the correct reading are we together and also if the measurement process has changed what are we saying supposing you want to measure the uh, resistance of a wire we know Ohm's law tells us that the current is proportional to the potential difference between the terminals isn't it but under normal conditions instead of measuring at normal room temperature you rise the temperature of the wire you know automatically the resistance will change isn't it and also instead of using the straight wire you now bend it bending the wire do increase the resistance isn't it so this is what they are saying when the measurement process has changed a systematic error is what introduced what do you do use the uh, correct conditions and you get the correct reading are we together and also if you are maybe measuring some mechanical uh, uh, force or mechanical torque you know that things like friction can modify the propagation of the signal isn't it because a friction causes loss isn't it so if uh, friction maybe exists in mechanical measurement it can cause error what do you do just put it in a smooth place where there is no that friction you get your correct reading isn't it therefore this one because we can eliminate it we can also categorize it as what systematic error are we together and also in electrical circuit if you are trying to measure voltages or you want to measure frequency or things like that you know that change in resistance or attenuation of the signal they have effect on what some electrical parameters isn't it so whenever you change the resistance or attenuation has changed definitely the signal you are measuring should give you a wrong value and by eliminating that change in your resistance or change in attenuation you can get the correct reason i mean read it and also so this uh, systematic error can be introduced by the human observer that is you as a person taking the measurement we know there is what you call error due to parallax isn't it but this one is paramount in what analog systems in digital will there be any parallax can you remember error due to parallax are you want do you want to tell me that you forget what you learned in physics secondary school 
Oga, what do they call error due to parallax? I don't want to call you because your time, I assume there is no miracle center. You pass your exams yourself. You forgot. So let me advise you. Let me advise you. Sorry. You have to remember everything. I have a friend. He is supposed to be in water resources engineering. Now he is in Saudi Arabia. He is a lecturer there. He is head of a department. He said somebody came from UK. He wanted employment. They were interviewing him. They even asked him as low as hardness of the water. What causes hardness? How many types of hardness do we have? That guy has PhD from London, UK, but he cannot answer them. Is it because he don't have the knowledge? No, he ignores. Don't ignore anything. Wherever you are, you carry your knowledge along. So now. What? Yes, what is error due to parallax? If you have, uh, if you have, let, 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 let me, I know, let me explain to you. <laughs> me, I know. Supposing you have, let's say this is a meter, a rule or something like that. Instead of looking at it directly, you look at it from the angle. Instead of, you, of seeing 6.3, you see 6.4 or 6.2 because you look at it from the wrong angle. Or maybe the reflection of light can make you take a wrong reading, readings. These are what we call error due to parallax. Do you understand? So they are fundamentals. Please try to remember them. Your child can come back from school and ask you this. And if you can answer, you'll be surprised what you go and tell his friends. Okay, random error sources. We call them noise. We call them random because we don't know what causes them. Isn't it? And of course, there is no any single measure you can take to eliminate them. Isn't it? So what you have control over is what? Systematic error. Whose sources are known? And of course, you know how to eliminate them, isn't it? So if you look at this, supposing this is my physical process I'm measuring. At the same time, I have another signal coming from the word environment. We call it environmental noise. The sensor itself, maybe its temperature will rise or it something of the sensor may change. It can introduce its own error. We call it what? Sensor error. So these two, if you combine them, they are things that you cannot account for. And of course, you cannot eliminate them. So we call them random errors. So what a designer of any measurement instrument is expected to do is to be able to know all his systematic errors and devise a means of what eliminating them. Because those ones, they are deterministic. You know, signal, they are of two types. We have deterministic, we have stochastic. If we say something is deterministic, you know it pattern, isn't it? Stochastic is what? Random. You cannot uh, change it. Are we together? Good. The next thing is what we call sensor fusion. Sensor fusion. A fusion, if you can remember your physics also, there is what we call nuclear fusion in physics. What is nuclear fusion? It's a process where two or more elements or two or more atoms fuse together to give a larger atom. And in the process, an energy is what? Released. So in the same way here, the sensor fusion is a process where you have so many uh, inputs that are being fed into different sensors and their output are now combined into one device that will give a combined output because there are some processes that if you want to measure them you have to measure so many variables at the same time for instance if you are taking a measurement to determine the effect of rainfall maybe on the strength of uh, communication signal when you are measuring th that uh, uh, the intensity of the rainfall, at the same time you need to measure the temperature of the surrounding, isn't it? You need to measure the what the pressure of the surrounding to see whether at different temperatures and different pre uh, pressures that effect of rainfall is being changed or not, isn't it? So the process of measuring many variables, combining them together to give you a single accurate result is what we call what fusion of the sensors. Look at this example. This is my environment, the physical environment, as I have given example. You can measure the intensity of the rainfall, for example. At the same time, measure the temperature of the surrounding and what the pressure of the surrounding so that they will be raised by different sensors and their output signal, L1, S1 to S3, should go to the sensor that you fuse them together and give the combined result. A typical example here is if you want to synthesize an image if you want to synthesize an image, all you need to do sometimes 
you have to measure so many signals maybe to measure the signal detected by a radar you know what is a radar to measure the optical that's the light signal of the surrounding and measure to measure some other signals that are invisible you know apart from the visible spectrum we have invisible isn't it the visible spectrum is made up of white light which has so many how many components seven isn't it red orange yellow green blue indigo and what violet beyond violet we have ultraviolet behind red we have what infrared so all this you can maybe combine them to see how your image will be influenced by them are we together then we come to the types of uh, measuring instrument measuring instrument are of basically two types we have what we call null instrument and we have deflection instrument the null is an instrument that if you want to measure anything you will make it to balance at a zero point isn't it so if you look at this it means i have two variables one of them is known the other one is what unknown if you go to market you want to buy let's say nl that you use for a building what did they do they will put a weight on one pan isn't it and put what the nail in the other to see when they balance them that is what they call null instrument where you have to input one is unknown the other one is what none isn't it so as you can see maybe like uh, a pan balance here i have my non input and i have my what unknown input in electrical terms this is what we normally have the known is called the balance input the unknown is called the measurement as we have seen isn't it the two of them will enter my comparator what the comparator is doing is to find the difference between the two isn't it as you can see this one is additive positive and this one is subtractive negative so if they are the same the comparator will give us a zero difference right so therefore it is at balance point so uh, your deflection here should be what equal to zero are we together but whenever you have an arrow that is they are not the same what do you do you have a corrective in, uh, input what did the people do at the market those who sell net? Reduce. reduce or increase isn't it and this is what the correction feedback are we together so this is what you call the null instrument then the second one they call it a deflection instrument this one we have our system in a balance point all we do is to put our measurement that is the physical process to see the level it what deviated from the balance point so in this case we don't have two we have only one isn't it but at the same time the external uh, variable you are measuring it is like applying a force to displace the balance device from its balancing point so the extent to which it displaces it is the what magnitude of the measurement are we together so look at this typically here let's say this is my spring that spring should be at zero contraction or zero extension depending on how you use it if it is a spring balance we extend it isn't it so it is at normal length. whenever you attach something it will be what on that tension isn't it and if you operate it like this it should be under what compression and when it is not loaded by anything the reading should be at what zero point isn't it whenever you put then it will start displacing it from the balance point so in general this is the block diagram this is my input my transducer that will sense the what external instrument like this what is my transducer is the spring isn't it is the transducer now it will change the force into what distance because the displacement is a distance isn't it now that signal should determine the amount of what deflection we should have and of course it should be conditions that is we have a scale that will be showing what is the extent of the uh, deflection and finally you have your what indicated output are we together but what you need to understand by this conditioning is that modifying signal i have explained earlier on are we together good so if you understand this the next thing is to look at the two ways of displaying results we can display results uh, either in analog form or in what digital form as we all know the basic instrument we have in life or the basic physical signals we have they are continuous in nature all of them isn't it the only thing is if you want to 
display something in digital form you have to do some modifications isn't it some conversions so here is a typical example let's say this is my physical process let's say a thermocouple a thermocouple is made up of two metals of different thermal conductivity isn't it i don't need to be teaching you physics but i want you to be remembering all these things this is what will make you complete engineer okay so now this uh, thermocouple will sense maybe the temperature and it will come to our signal conditioning device that's where we put our modifying signal and the output should be seen continuously as this temperature been measured is changing so is this one going to be what rising up and down depending on the variation this is what we call the analog sensor but if you come to the digital sensor whatever it will read of course it will read it from the physical process which is continuous in nature but we have to use what a digital combustion process in order to display it as zeros and what ones that is either the signal in full or completely absent but you cannot see anything in between and in the process of doing that you know we do use what we call analog to digital combustion which is made up of registers and other digital uh, components are we together so all these readings uh, is, is what i explain isn't it to give you on or off one or zero high or low for the digital but for the analog and based on these two uh, instruments we have analog and digital sensors we definitely have the readout that's the display unit isn't it for the analog we have a continuous display unit where the displacement keeps on changing like this handle when it is moving you can have something in between here isn't it if you come from here this is one this is two three four and what five you can have something in between here we have to say three point something isn't it but in digital form it will give you a whole number whatever there is nothing in between so these are the introductory uh, aspect i said we are going to look at today next week god willing we are going to go deeply into the uh, course thank you very much